Hello, this is an introduction to one of the what they call suddenly everyone is talking about type of a situation and uh, of course, I am talking about uh, rapid prototyping and one form of rapid prototyping called 3 D printing seems to has uh, you know attracted everybody's attention because what happened to the case of publishing in publishing what do we do somebody writes it could be a novel it could be a theoretical paper or it could be anything which involves to be printed and distributed everywhere. So, in the beginning we had this typewriter somebody had to sit and keep on doing the typewriter. So, we have the Underwood and the Remington and uh, brother and so on and so on and then all writers invariably went and acquired one of those new typewriters including there were small portable uh, what you call uh, foldable and so on and the old business of writing by hand taking a pen and writing by hand sort of became a little it went into the background, but still people continue to use writing which is real. Now, after the typewriting was come somebody had to now go and do what is called type setting. So, if you want it in large numbers a few things you can do by putting what is called a carbon paper and hence the CC carbon copy came about. You see all of them know has a reality in original real real products. So, carbon copy came about after next after the carbon copy came about if you wanted to print a large number of uh, anything any material we had to send it for typesetting and printing. So, somebody you know puts all those letters and then it runs it is run in a press and uh, you know something a paper is pressed against it and all that no. So, that came about and almost intellectual meant publisher and publishers needed money. So, this whole thing became sort of expensive and from that thing came the concept of desktop publishing saying why do you need to have this huge uh, uh, calendar presses and uh, photo offset multicolor and all that why cannot we do it at home on a desktop computer. So, in the desktop computer what people used to do is print everything and probably format it change the fonts and then make everything fit into a known uh, format hand it over to somebody who will print it and give it to us and get multiple copies and it went forward a little eventually when it went forward it ended up with tabletop printers. So, it was easy allow me just for the argument right now use the word Xerox. In fact, Xerox corporation who incidentally probably has a patent on this mouse ok. They started making printers huge printers and to the extent that what was a trade name eventually became a verb get it Xeroxed and uh, now we know photocopying is almost synonymous with it. But the thing what we what I am trying to stress is that there is this printing has become has been made very 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 easy. So, you have printers which will give you you know multiple copies then there are you know institutional printers and so on. I have a small uh, write up which I will try to come back later. So, people were working on it saying if I need to make something typically I need these glasses and uh, is also made with some black material you can see it no and imagine I have a tube a tube of acrylic or a tube of something which will harden fast like if you see the glue gun you have seen the hot melt adhesive gun. So, in the hot melt adhesive gun what do we have we have a 
ethic uh, what do you call uh, some device which melts that thing and we have a gun where in the tip it heats and makes it a little easy to flow and people started tracing uh, what do you call uh, patterns and all that and what was adhesive between two things you know also became something which you can play around with it almost you can make uh, a type of uh, glass you have seen all those huge uh, what do you call uh, church glasses stained glass type of things were possible all based on the hot melt adhesive. Now, while this is one side another side what is called the inkjet printing started getting popular saying uh, why do we have to have a photocopy type of thing why cannot we have an ink jet where ink is actually you know pushed into small slots and that thing afterwards it is cured and come about. As people started working on it suddenly somebody I do not know who it is right now I am just not talking about it they came about with what was obviously simple printing using some wire or something you melt it and start printing things with it and suddenly you know the whole what is now almost you know we, we feel it is going to solve all the world's problems 3D printing. But 3D printing is a small set of rapid prototyping what we want is that quickly if I have some concept in my mind I have some concept I am not sure what the concept is I have this is a base and then this is something this is a tip and then I need to do something with it maybe I need to erase and uh, something which is there in my mind has to come down so that I can demonstrate it to others. This is where the whole concept of what was prototyping and then what was what do you call rapid prototyping eventually uh, an idea which uh, a time has come 3D printing came about. Now, if uh, if you kindly look at this thing one of the thing is why we need uh, this 3D printing stuff is we need this simulation in industrial design a product has to be experienced in its intended human environment has to fulfill all its functions not just technical and alternate is to be evaluated. So, you see here one of the first thing is how products look like general look and feel ergonomic ergonomic means how well it sits in the hand and then how well you can use it and usability direct sensory inputs touch balance comfort appearance and occasionally smell and sound. So, it looks a very what you call counterintuitive saying why do we need sound we need if any of you have handled a camera you will notice that shutter relay sound is the unless it gives that sound we will not get a, a feedback of how things have operated. Now, we have got used when we started we all started with that big uh, you know clackety clack cameras which had uh, mirrors and uh, we used to listen carefully whether the mirror has gone up and then usually there is a focal plane shutter the focal plane shutter has uh, opened and then the mirror has been restored to that all this you can easily find out if any problem is there. And when these mobile phones came first time we have nothing here is not it we, we just have I mean there is nothing to press in fact both the front and back of this are uh, glass pieces and when we press something something has to happen and while it looks fine. And sometimes you know you have a buzzer uh, at the back it vibrates or uh, we have something. Occasionally we end up with very peculiar uh, things I will try to show you. You see I have a very peculiar indic character keyboard here which a little similar to what we start but then when I press a key you see a wheel like thing has come and I can move things around okay, and see which of these is selected. 
suddenly what looked like a tactile feedback not needed anymore. And what do you do with uh, I do not know there is it is called a chakra what do you with a chakra like this this was developed instantly by industrial design center of uh, IIT Bombay and I am a fan of this uh, that whole thing. Now, you see here what we thought was a generally a keyboard simple keyboard has several other ways we need to work with it. This is where now if you come back to my slide sound all the suddenly you know make a what you call uh, a comeback. This is where 3D printing at least promised saying very quickly I can make things and present it to the public the stakeholders in this case one is safety another is manufacturability how easy it is manufacture how is the best ways to produce and then tooling and then assembly what comes in first what comes in last and all of us are you know when it comes to maintenance and disassembly our good old friend is waiting Murphy saying if you open one screw and uh, something and invariably that nut or screw goes and hides in the most inaccessible place. So, how do you disassemble parts and then how do you update the system and then how do you diagnose all these things are generally the best way to do is by manufacturing a prototype. So, we have all this no. Uh, so, and then we have uh, rendering and thing and all that I will stop here and uh, quickly go back to the interesting thing which I am sure quite a few of us are waiting. This is the concept of 3D printing which is a small subset of rapid prototyping. You see here I have a very interesting object uh, which is uh, probably nothing but uh, it is a peculiar heat sink. If you see here I for it to be manufactured it has to be held in different places and a cutter has to move in all the directions and this has to be ready. And from various considerations I would like to have one in my hand because it is not easy to interpret these things while it looks okay here such things suddenly made sense to be made in 3D printing. So, in 3D printing that is typically a machine let me go back to a few more parts you see here notice something about this clock it is a 9 to 5 clock and you see where the 1 o'clock is this does not start at 12. Out here in colleges we have a recess at 1 o'clock noon time. So, the whole perception of the student is everything is before lunch and after lunch. So, 9 to 1 is you know all the sessions before lunch and then after lunch is there and uh, Suddenly, I have noticed the other no 6, 7 thing is not there at all. Now, this was just directly printed on a normal printer, an A3 printer, and it is stuck there. Imagine I need to now make, make this clock, and you see some very interesting things are also written there saying work smart, not long and hard. Long and hard makes sense in some other thing, at least the semantics of it working smart makes sense. Now, you see other things are also all the other elements No, it is a 9 to 5 clock and then there is no minutes hand into there is only an hour hand approximately if you look at it it is just past to do. So, you can look at it Maybe it is 9 20 or anything in this case further it is not divided into 5 parts it is divided into 4 parts. So, it is a quarter past 2. So, suddenly what was I can now print the whole thing I fit just like I have the black and white printer here I can fit it to a machine here and eventually I can have a beautiful 9 to 5 clock and 9 to 5 are normal working hours and 5 to 9 uh, of course, you <laughs> evening times people get a little bit of relaxation morning they start running around and uh, there is work all the time. Now, this whole device including the colors including the shape including the fonts everything can be designed 
in CAD and you can go ahead and print these things. So, I am amazed at it as I just produced this as a student exercise and you see here I have some other part I do not even know what it is except that you see a small detail there is a groove here there is something here and then this was supposed to be something for a shape memory alloy motor. So, if we excite a wire I mean electrically pass a current through the wire it clamps and runs something. So, we have all these parts which can easily be produced using this 3D printing technology. Typically this is what you would have seen this outside and why I feel you know I am a little happy for getting this chance of being allowed to uh, talk about this 3D printing is we have been at it for quite some time. This machine has been uh, I mean first I started using it around 10 years back and since uh, 6 or 7 years it did this I will show you the samples what we have put. This is a, a professional machine the advantages of our professional machine is it will take any drawing which you make and the drawing formats are typically what standard products I mean standard uh, what you call software gives one of the standard software is probably related to Autodesk who started with the DWG format and even earlier to that the initial graphic exchange IGES system was also there and the advantage is if I make a CAD model it can be printed here and same file in principle can be used for carrying out other operations simplest thing being machining using a 3D what you call machining center it is either a CNC vertical or horizontal thing. Now, slowly things have changed a little ok let me get back to this simple thing and uh, better to do it. In principle there is nothing great about this machine, but why this is costly I will give you an example later there is a shelf here we load the base here and then there is a screw feed here the screw feed keeps pushing it up in layers. This is where standard lithography files became popular and this one at the back is an x y system. So, the y is front to back x is left to right and this is the z or z coordinate. Now, things have improved dramatically you have seen here this is the same machine 10 years later the latest technology it has become much smaller and uh, genuinely it is easy to fabricate these things. And you see these are all the parts that can easily be produced in a 3D printing setup. Uh, there is something some this is actually part of a Fresnel lens I will use the word Fresnel put up with me because even calling it Fresnel is probably not how the uh, French call it they call it probably Fresnel or something I do not know what it is. This is part of a uh, Fresnel lens uh, complex and the next slide shows you you see here we want it <laughs> you understand we want this piece it has a peculiar uh, what do you call part of a sector radius there is a opening here and then this whole thing has to sit here and it has to come out of the machine ah, now you see here what I am holding in my left hand is the piece right hand is what not many people tell you is the support material. In the case of that professional machine there is a poly I think uh, some acetate uh, allyl acetate or uh, lactic acetate uh, material which dissolves in water at a temperature which is lower than the basic other material. So, this build material after having built it we put it in that soak it and uh, I mean there is a, a small agitator and there is a ultrasound and the whole thing you know comes apart and then we take it out and we can use this part conveniently. So, if we keep going this is one or two things notice there is a little coarse build up here is a little coarse and you see here no same thing the build up is a little fine. So, inside and you see something else here this is 
the base on which it is printed and this is where actually 3D printing became very very popular. Not long ago, long ago means around 15 years back if somebody were to make a part like this and try to show it to a, an injection molder, it used to take you know I mean ages to get this. First of all somebody has to convert what he has in his mind to a standard 3 view drawing. So, you have a various I mean uh, views saying uh, what you call you have a plan view, you have a elevation and side view, several section views plus something which not many people like is an isometric view. Suddenly you need not worry about it. If you know a little about how to use any package, you can make this on the screen and print it immediately. A little romantic, but it is real. But you see here same thing, how well all the small details now like you have small bosses then we have something here little detail everything can easily be made here. Ah, this is a one of those interesting thing. A school boy wanted to make a ornithopter, but not using the standard uh, what you call uh, Da Vinci's uh, mechanism saying why cannot you use it using gears and using other things. So, when he asked one of us we said okay, you tell us what you want and we will print it. This is a perfectly perfect to form means good to the rule involute gear. This section is a rack section, this whole thing is a rack section. What you see here is a pure rack means they are tapered like this and then slowly as you go here you see here now you see full involute tooth profile this was only possible using generating the form by CAN and then later on printing it using the fused filament uh, method. So, in a way no I am happy and I do not know what has happened of him. And in the initial stages this became very very popular I am sure uh, this symbol no all of you will know this symbol. And I will acknowledge this. So, we have the original maker bot, maker bot probably brought this to our genuinely to our attention. But if you want to make a replica of something first of all you need to do something you see the replica this is the device which is the scanner. So, you keep something probably I think this is the target uh, which they have given is a maker bot target they have given for the linearity and all that it rotates and any object you can keep on it can be converted into a 3D file format I will not say right now no printing format is STL otherwise it is a file. So, suddenly we are in beautiful you know company and the crux of the whole thing is what I had told you earlier, it is a lot like a hot melt glue gun. So, you have the build material flowing here and then you have a nozzle at the bottom and this nozzle sort of you know, moves everything around. I will come back to it later about the actual uh, that mechanism, but if you see here whole crux of the whole thing is an x y table that is all there is to it anybody can if you can make an x y table you can make your own 3D printer. So, this is taken from one of our students uh, what you call work and you see there is a head here. This is used for various things in this case no they have just used it as a, a calligraphy pen. <laughs> if you can have a font <laughs> that pen writes it for you and it is not as if anybody invented it x y table is an old thing this is taken from a what you call a, a type of a Gerber plotter uh, which has been used for making printed circuit negatives. So, it has been there So I mean uh, to make it short I will show you even this is even simpler it is a kit you have two motors it moves up and down if you can have a vertical thing in layers you can do it and this is not a toy, it is a serious learning experience. This one is a line follower, 
So, in a line follower you know what it is no you usually have three motors the option there and the other thing is whether you have a steering uh, wheel or you have a caster in this case it is a caster. This whole thing if you see the base of it no could have easily been made in plastic probably it is probably it is an acrylic in which all these openings have been made except that in operations like this they use laser milling or laser cutting to make these jobs. So, I will just go a little forward and things went on quite well and uh, I think some of you know where it is no ok this has come from the one of the original hard disk or I am sorry floppy disk made out of non ferrous casting probably it is a zinc uh, aluminum casting and you see the detailing and all. So, attempts have been made saying why cannot we print all these things directly in things and as things have progressed slowly the issue of design rules came about saying in the case of you see here at the extreme left position no, we have all this fused deposition, stereo lithography, laser sintering, material jetting, binder jetting and all that no and saying how much should be the feature detail supporting walls unsupported walls overhangs and all this no several these are actually not rules as such as much as guidelines depending on your uh, you know interest you can play around with it. And initial stages people did not know too much about these things can you see here now if you see that filament what we what do you call just fuse and deposit does not really build up as we think as we are you have seen here we have all this stuff what is layer shape what is a slice diameter actual diameter there is still a lot to be learnt about it I just showed it to you from a random thing. So, I thought I will just show you all these things ok. Now, if you go to the I will I mean I loosely call it the internet if you search on the internet you get multiple hits I just wanted to show you you see here I just loosely gave I did not say Alexa give me or Siri tell me or anything I just said you no know, typed actually. So, a little about 3D printing you get lakhs of hits now study on 3D printing how 3D printing works minis and so on and so on now printing technology introduction to 3D printing and all that all that is fine for reading, but unless you make a actually uh, a part and then try to try to build it you have seen this we have a beautiful thing about how to design parts for FTM fuse deposit modeling by what do you call uh, default this has become. So, lot of stuff about what is an introduction and then uh, what is a bridge and then how do we build these things these come only by practice practice and practice and practice. So, how to do vertical axis this is taken from these things no and then what to do with overhangs you see here something which is started here is coming up so much as you start making you see here it cannot build anymore here it is reasonable here the granular tissue starts after about uh, maybe 10 degrees maximum and then by the time it reaches 60 degrees it practically non usable at all. So, things like this saying and then what to do with all these things no what is called simple filleting. So, it has got a new name for adjacent corners first layers are particularly important as discussed above for vertical holes so on and so on no it compresses the print material. So, what is called elephant's foot has to be created. So, we have this stuff about how to build things. So, it is not automatic as if you somehow make a beautiful 3D model and things print on itself this is the most critical thing you can think of. If you are to take a circular 
part and try to print it like a cylinder similar to what I showed you that uh, shape memory alloy thing it weighs lot of support material and often it leads to errors. Same thing is it possible for us to do something about it saying if you build it like this probably no support is needed like when we build an arch as you start building an arch things get easily built in it yeah this I have already shown you. So, things are you know have been very very conveniently made and we come into more and more uh, what do you say interesting things saying directly material is available on the this is a design guideline saying how do you do you know like plastic design oh sorry a lot depends on 3D printer resolution what we assumed is automatic is not automatic and it varies within parts. These things I thought this is uh, what do you call uh, uh, I will try to stress a little and then try to things like spacing and clearances, interlocking volumes, piece assembly and something related to tolerances and how to deal with flexible plastics. These suddenly have become very very popular. Only thing what you see in uh, what you call the commercial literature is saying if you think it we can make it and uh, I wish things were so easy it is not so easy if you can think we cannot make it they are not at all uh, that easy. So, I can only say welcome to the course and uh, who will be benefited somebody who is keen on uh, learning a little about it and the good, uh, good news is that uh, there are printing services are available just like earlier you could take and even today no you do not need to own a printer because printer is given away cheap, but the cartridges are expensive. Over here in India uh, right away we have uh, table top uh, <laughs> what you call uh, the sink jets and all for maybe 5000, but the cartridge color set cost 1000 rupees and it just dries up it has a inbuilt uh, I mean time bomb and kill switch automatically it goes uh, I mean but if you do not use it or if you open the seal it looks like 3 to 6 months uh, everything you know shows empty. Hence you need not own a printer same way lot of open source solid modeler or 3D packages are available. So, if you somehow learn how to use one of those packages it is very very convenient for you if you can make a solid model and pass it on to one of the printers you do not even need to see the printer you just give it to him and beautifully I have a key chain. So, I was thinking the other way is no saying why cannot I do something why cannot I hide it why cannot I have a LED light and all this if you can think of a part like this it is very easy to be made when I pull it can be like this when I do something and slide it the whole thing you no know, can probably be hidden inside right now I kept it at the back can I make a part like this or can I make it like a, a pouch side is open I slide it in and then it goes inside all this if you can think of a design and probably follow all these various considerations you can post it you can send it on uh, of course not on social media but you can send it by a regular uh, paid email and you can have the part mailed back to you so as a trial thing i feel it's a worthwhile thing i think we all of us know should uh, probably try it and uh, will be better off for that 